Okay. Is it, is it playing? Alright, it's playing out there. Okay, so just one thing. I just came home from church, alright? And I came home... I don't know. I just came home being retarded. And I go on Tumblr today. I'm telling you right now. I went on Tumblr today and I see this video by Caitlyn. I know your name. I know your name. I know it. I know it. Caitlyn. I saw the video and I started watching it because, you know, I get nosy. I'm clicking stuff. So I clicked it and I started watching. First of all, the feels, just the emotions that it brought out of me. I am scared my aunt's going to walk in, but whatever. I'm like, I'm sitting here listening, I'm like, oh my god, there's someone out there who's going through shit I'm going through, who's at that point where they don't even know what the hell they're doing, like, cause, oh my god, I've been through so much shit in my life, I, I understand we, people have different situations, they have to deal with different stuff, you know, we grow up differently, we grow up with different kind of families, we have different kind of, you know, troubles. And honestly, I don't know what's going on in your house. I'm just, I, I really don't, Caitlin, I really don't know. I think your name, I hope I got it right. I really don't know. I thought it was Sophie, actually. <laughs> I really did, and then I figured it out. But I really don't know what's going on in your life. I'm sorry if it's, like, been tough, you know. People go through that. And I've been through my own share stuff. My, um, my aunts, my two of them, I used to live with them before I came to New York to live with this aunt. They used to be mentally, um unstable because of my cousin Jason dying in a car accident and honestly I can understand the grief they went through they were depressed they were upset but they never really talked to anybody about it when people ask them hey are you okay how are you doing they just you know shrugged it off the shoulders said oh no I'm fine you know I can deal with it it's a it's a person dying death happens all the time I was little back then I didn't really understand I said oh Jason's gone he's not coming back oh well, I miss him tell him I said hi if you see him you know, three-year-old, four-year-old kind of thing. And the thing is that you don't really, it doesn't hit you that hard till you're sitting there face-to-face -face with the actual problem. And as I, as I grew up, I noticed a change in my aunt's behavior. They were becoming more distant. They wouldn't go outside. They wouldn't talk to people. They, you know, it was just us in our little house. And after a while, one of my other aunts, Carolyn, her name's Carolyn, and she's a really, she was a really nice woman, she is. She was outgoing, she would buy me things, you know, I was the brat of the, of the family. They would give me stuff, and, you know, it was that kind of security inside that small home. I had no father, I just had those two, and it was the security of knowing that I had someone to love me, I had everything I could ever want, everything I could ever need in that family. I felt no fear, no pressure, no nothing. Even as I went to school and the other kids picked on me because I was a crybaby. Honestly, I was a crybaby. I cried over taking my pencil, cried over pushing me, cried over stepping in front of me in, in line, like everything. So I grew up with security. I grew up with that and they started changing and I'm not good with change. She was starting to get more, you know, sappy and stuff like that. I'm thinking, what, why is this happening? And one day we was walking down the street after a long time of being indoors and she and my aunt carolyn she turned to me she said if i ever ever forget who i am and i start acting differently i want you to come up to me and i want you to say i know you're in there i know the real you is in there and i will not leave i will not leave you till you come out and honestly at that time i was just like okay well i'll do that i'll do that i was 11 i was 11 i'm four i'm 15 now i just turned 15 i was 11 and in, in, in that year, before I turned 12, in that year when I was 11, a lot of things happened. Not only did she, Carolyn get depressed, but her twin sister Marilyn, who was also my other aunt who lived with us, she started to get depressed from having to deal with my aunt Carolyn, who went from walking outside to short walks to just staying inside the whole time. She was a complete wreck. She looked like she barely got any sleep. And it was hard for me because I just, I just got out of um, middle school and I had to you know, deal with the pressure of actually growing up to actually be a preteen, be a teenager, to actually, you know, meet other children because I was one of those reserved children that only talked to one or two people and if you came up to me I, and you talked to my friends, I would shy away because I felt like I didn't belong there. I was secure, but I just didn't feel secure around people I didn't know personally. And it's hard to get to know me. Trust me. On the internet, it's easy. I'll talk to you. Hi. I don't, yeah. But it's hard to, like, because I'm not really, out I'm an outgoing person once I know you. But when I don't know you, I'm one of those quiet people who don't want to talk. I'm staring at the screen and the camera. Sorry. 
and hearing how you you're 17 you have to deal with all this stuff Caitlin I know it's hard I'm 15 I had to back then I was 12 when I had to deal with them my one aunt she would instigate on everything like one like if I say I was on my computer and I was just playing on my computer I was talking to friends on chat tango which was the first website that got me started on role playing I was talking on chat tango with my friends and she would come up behind me and she would start bothering me about the simplest things and it would it would get my nerves because like you and you love someone and you know the real them and they suddenly start changing on you you don't trust them anymore you don't you don't you don't want to talk to them unless they're that real person so so I would I was get I would get irritated I would start yelling at her we would have fights constantly and at, at first I was just like she's acting like a five-year-old it's just like a little sister bothering like she bothers me I can ignore it I can get through that I never had siblings but I can get through this I mean she, she it's, it's not her fault you know she she just she's sick that's why I thought she's just sick but when my second aunt started to you know she 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 was she wasn't as bad but you know people they just I don't know she she was assuming everyone was out to get her and that's really sad because when you live in a small town and where we lived was the crossroad to every other country it was a crossroad to New York crossroad to Florida if you were driving so people passed by people walked down the street that happened we could not walk down the street without her glancing over her shoulder looking staring at people across the street who who weren't even looking at her they were looking at something else but she would turn to me and she would say why are they giving me that look and I'd look at them and I noticed they weren't looking at her they were looking at a tree or a house because we live in a very historical area so you know tourists I'm like they're not looking at you she's like they're all out to get me aren't they I'm like they don't know you they, why would they come after you and I was, I was confused because I, I didn't notice the immediate change then but after a while started getting worse she started you know getting more possessive she actually woke me up at about 4 in the morning on a school day and told me to play Wii and we were playing and she started I had a blanket with it was a very bright colorful blanket that I had for Christmas that I got for Christmas and it had a lot of colors and she said what is this for I said it's a blanket it's for being warm she's like why all the colors I was like I don't know I didn't buy it so then she got up and left the room so I'm still playing Wii I'm wondering where she went she comes back with curlers and throws them on the bed and she said that she made an assumption that because people were out to get her they set specific things in the house to weaken her to make her weaker to destroy her you know try to kill her and she said that black white and gray were the colors that weakened her and colorful colors are what gave strength and the reason why I had the blanket was so that I could overpower her and hurt her I said I wouldn't do that I love you you're my aunt you know I love I care about you and stuff like that so then eventually I just convinced her to go to sleep I went up got ready for school went. what really scared me was that one day I came home after being I was at my friend's house and I came home because I went to her house over the weekend because I was very upset with my aunt I went to my her house over the weekend and came home and I noticed that the door was open I go inside and there's piles of stuff on the floor there are clothes in a pile my computer is smashed on the floor and my room was completely empty she emptied the drawer she threw away my Wii my Xbox all my video games she threw away all my clothes all my books all my childhood memories and I'm sitting there like what are you doing and she said we're moving I'm thinking how can you move without your stuff I said to move you need boxes you don't have a truck we don't have the money to move we weren't exactly a rich family we weren't an average family we were pretty poor because we had welfare and stuff so we're living off what we can get and I'm thinking I was kind of upset because I'm like that stuff had a lot to me I have stuff from friends I have stuff from family that's stuff that I had with me over years and like it really upset me so I tried to tell her to stop but she wouldn't so what happens I went to my friend's house and at that time me and my best friend me and my best friend as you know her on YouTube you know her as Susie she showed up on a few of my videos Susie is my best friend in the whole world. She's helped me through thick and thin. She's always been there for me. But at the time, we were fighting. 
so she wasn't at the house because I went to go her, to her house to ask her for help but she wasn't there she was at a friend's house um she was sleeping over so I went and got the friend I was sleeping over at and she she um she didn't really understand what was going on I was like she threw away everything so I go to a neighbor a very trustworthy neighbor I thought he was trustworthy I tell him my aunt is throwing away everything so since he helped us early, earlier in the week, he said she threw away the TV because we got this huge flat screen TV. He said she threw away the TV. I'm like, yeah, he, she threw it away. All of a sudden, I go to get my friend's dad. I come back. The neighbors are digging through the trash. They're not trying to help us. They're trying to take the stuff that she's throwing away. And at that moment, I realized she, maybe she's right. Maybe people are actually out to get this because obviously you see a child walking around I don't care how old they are I was 12 whatever if you see a six-year-old three-year-old twelve-year-old whatever age if you see any child on the street walking around lost and you see their parent throwing away things how what what gives you the right to go in the dumpster and take that child's stuff you don't even know they were taking out stuff and they were just walking away with it and I'm looking at them like no so someone picks up an Xbox I said that's mine you put it down they put they gave it to my friend and I said, if you find anything else, you give it to her. Because most of this stuff is mine. I won't have you taking anything. Only a few people left. And one person, one person, this one lady, she walked in. She took out a, a blue Hummer, you know, the remote control. And the Hummer, it was old. I haven't used it. I usually would sit on it and, you know, scoot around. But I was 12 years old. I'm, I'm trying to grow up. I have to take care of my two sick aunts. I don't need that toy anymore. She asked, she kindly, not unlike everybody else who just went in there and took something left, she came up to me and she said, may I please have this? My son is about three years old now and um, we haven't really been able to get him anything for Christmas or for his birthday because we're kind of short, short on money. So, you know, I believe people too easily, but, you know, I said, yeah, it's okay, you can take it. And she leaves. I see a little boy standing in the doorway a few apartments down and he sees the truck and like just the look on his face I'm thinking I grew up like that I grew up poor getting what I could get that anyone could give me and I appreciated it and the look on his face was just like he tears the eyes I'm kind of getting off subject here but the fact that my aunts did that they they were so sick that they just thought they were just so depressed and so upset they thought people were out to get them it's just that I didn't know I couldn't do anything to help them and when I went to foster care I, I would literally just sit there and think if I had known earlier and I had gotten them the help and I had done something could I have stopped that from happening could I still be living in their house with them and going to high school with my best friend still instead of going to a different part of the state just to live with a family who I don't know who I'm not really comfortable with and when you go into foster care, things get really rough and things start going through your head and you start thinking multiple things. It just is stressful. And to anyone who takes advantage of their family and thinks, oh, my mom just hit me or my mom just, my dad just said go home without any dinner and all that. And I'm going to call diapers or, or I'm going to call this um, family services on them. You don't do that because once you get in the system, you can't get out. And I doubt anyone's going to want a child like you if you think that just because you got hit or you got reprimanded or because they told you you can't have something doesn't mean that they're going to send you somewhere else where someone's going to spoil you like a little brat. No, it's not like that. You go there because you have to. What I went through is something that no child has to go through. And when you notice something like that, you have to speak up. I'm telling you right now, I don't care what it was. I had to go into foster care thinking that it was my fault that my aunt acted like that because I wasn't being a grateful child because I wasn't helping them through what they had to go through. And I went through three different foster homes. Three. Now, I've heard of a girl who went through seven, ten, fourteen. I don't know. She went through a lot. And some kids, they do that. They don't behave. They, they, they do what they want to do. They say stuff that they shouldn't say. They hurt the actual children who live with them. They talk back to the parents who actually cared enough to take them into their home. Children like that don't even deserve a second chance. You're lucky they didn't put you on the streets, which is a lot harder. Because when I lived with my aunts and they got on my nerves, I would go in my room, pack up my stuff, and walk around the, the town for a good 15 minutes before coming back home. Because I understood, I cannot live out on the streets. That's something that I cannot do because as a child, I know nothing about living alone. I know nothing at all. You have to grow up before you do anything. 
And even if you go through hard times and you know you still have growing up to do, that takes courage to still have to go through what you had to go through. I mean, I personally, when I went into my first foster home, I lived with this elderly couple and a 15 year old. And I was very shy, I was very quiet, and I didn't really, you know, know what I was going through. And I'm sitting here, you know, I was just, I would sit there, I would play with the cats, and I would think. What would happen if I was born into a different family? What if the situation was worse? What if it was better? And I'm thinking, no. This, like, I'm not really a religious person, but God has something planned for me. Don't say nothing. I'm not religious. Leave me alone. Uh -uh. And in the first home, I learned that you don't take advantage of people. You do what they ask when they ask you to, even if you don't want to do it. And that elderly couple, they were very kind, and they shared a lot of things with me, such as the, fa um, the father of the household gave me a harmonica and started off my rock collection, which I still have today. And he gave me the harmonica, he says, I learned how to play this without any help from anyone, without any lessons, and without any directions or anything like that. And I learned how to play a lot of songs, and I'm going to pass it on to you because I know how children these days, they use phones and they text and this, but if you do forget our phone number, or if you do forget to call, if you forget to write, I want you to remember us with this. And I'm thinking, I'm going to call you. <laughs> I'm gonna call you trust me I'm gonna call you and I ended up leaving the foster home because the school district would not allow me in so I, I couldn't start school unless I was in a close district that would allow me because I was in a different part of the state so I go to a second foster home and trust me it was upsetting to leave I, I waved to my new friend who lived down there with me I waved um, to my to my father the, bro the brother that lived there it was very upsetting to leave a foster home. It's like leaving a set a new part of your family. It's, it was really upsetting. And like now, I, I, I didn't feel guilty about it. I didn't. I was like, I have to go to school. You know, it's what's best for me. They just want what's best for me. So I go to my second one. Sorry if this is taking too long. I have a long story. Shut up. <laughs> leave me alone. Um, but like, I don't know your life story, Caitlin. I'm just sharing mine because I feel that... I feel that you know I trust I trust people too much too just like you do and I love how you trust people and people who take advantage of that like you don't even know you just don't go away now I'm just saying you don't take advantage of people who trust who trust you enough to share things like this I mean this is my life you don't have to know shit about me. I, I can just keep this shit to myself I can easily keep that shit to myself easily but I'm choosing to share it because I love people, I care about people, and I just want you guys to know I'm there for you and shit. But, so, yeah. In my second foster home, it was a Caucasian family with three little boys. And they, were, they weren't they were a rich family. They were, you know, a family who got by and they had a little extra. And I love that family dearly. The little boys, if they, I know, and I know they've seen some of my YouTube videos. If the family sees this, guys, I just love you. I don't want to put names out, but you guys were like the best foster family out of all of them. I loved you so much. You did so much for me. And I'm sorry that I wasn't exactly the best foster child. Well, probably was better than some of the ones you had, but you know, you guys, you guys did a lot for me. And if I took advantage of that, I'm really sorry. And trust me, I would have loved to stay for that other year. I would have loved to stay for Christmas. I would love to stay for another Halloween. I'm sorry I get emotional. But you guys were really um, special to me. I really loved you. Oh, shit. <laughs> you guys, like, they were just the best. They took me to Disney. <laughs> they took me to Disney. We went, we went on a boat trip. We went to mom and pop pop's house we got dogs we got a ferret we got hermit crabs we just did everything like a real family should and that taught me a lot about how things can change for you and how many friends i made in my new school west hampton middle school you are the shit i just want to say and i'm sorry for the loss of um for the loss of i'm sorry um, 
Uh, I know Colin lost his friend. I'm sorry for your your guys' loss, cause I Jordan Jordan. I'm sorry that he passed away. I don't know what from, cause you know once I leave leave the school, it's like oh part ways, shake hands, bye. But I heard that he passed. Someone named Jordan passed away. I'm very sorry for your loss. You know. Yay, go! I forgot what we. Ah, uh, it was something. The Giants. Yep. Anyway. And when I lived with the second foster family, they just, they were so special to me. I, I could have swore they were going to adopt me. And when a child thinks they're going to get adopted, it's not just, oh, I'm going to get adopted. I'm going to have a family. Oh, yeah. No, it's, oh, my fucking God, I'm going to be adopted. It's like crazy shit. So I'm thinking, I'm going to live here forever. I'm going to have an actual family. And what I figured out is that my father, who I had not known for a fucking long time. I don't know my dad. I don't know he wanted to adopt me and the thing is that when a parent the biological parent wants to adopt you the foster family can't have you like they just can't so I'm sitting here like family can have you first if the family doesn't want you then the foster family gets you but the fact that my father wanted me made me upset because if I left what will happen to the three boys that grew up as I grew up as the, they grew up in that one year we were together as my little brothers and I grew up as their big sister they had depended on me like I was there for them if I suddenly disappeared will they remember me will they even remember my name my nickname you know will they walk around the house and call my name and then go oh yeah I forgot she had to go live with her daddy like I, I wonder cuz when I went to my third foster home after um, I was re re replaced into another home I, I sat there and wondered what did I do wrong because it was sudden it was right after it was in the middle of my math class in school and he just called me to the office and took me to another boss home and they said they requested another and I'm sitting here like was it me was it it's stressful when they suddenly just take you like oh um the so-and-so family requested a, a home change you're sitting here like what the fuck did I do so I'm sitting here emotional crying in the car as we passed the house I'm like what did I do wrong was it because I was a little bit violent because I was a little bit too rough was I they could have easily talked to me about that I went to my third one the Jones family now Oof, now that's a family you heard the, ooh, girls don't even get me started I followed them on Facebook but I'm not on Facebook anymore they taught me that when your life is hard and you've been through some stuff and you misbehave and you do something wrong you got to get out of that you have to move on do what you got to do and if you can't do it you got to do it harder i mean they taught me they said you going to new york chick because i the thing with my dad did not work apparently his i, I hope you watch this video dad because i'm really mad at you your st your your stepdaughter and your new wife apparently think that I'm disrespectful because I wanted to go to my room because I didn't want to talk. Excuse me, but I barely saw you around the house anyway. Even when I sat on the couch for a good five hours every day, playing with the dog in the backyard, playing with the cat in my room, whatever. Because you expect me to become adjusted? That was only like a couple of weeks. That was a good two weeks in Florida. And you tell me I'm disrespectful because I stayed in my room. When you go to different houses, you don't know. You probably never even been through my situation. So shut up about me being disrespectful. You're the one being disrespectful. You don't even know me. Okay? I'm not no little girl who's just going to warm up to you immediately because I, cause I just can't. Because you're, you're my daddy's new wife. Shut up. Who do you think you are? You're not that special. Okay? And dad, for you to choose your stepdaughter and your wife over your actual daughter who you don't even know, who you have no business to choose over, I mean, I'm your little girl. I should be, come first. I don't, and like, they are important too. But when you hear that they say I'm disrespectful, you come to me first. You don't whip me into your room and scold me about being disrespectful and not let me have my say in it. No, that's not how fathers do it. And I ain't no daddy, but I can tell you how it is, okay? You tell, you come up to me, and if you and she got a problem, you say, hey, she said that you were being disrespectful because you were going to your room. And I would be like, no, actually, I've been, I, was, I usually get up in the morning, I probably wake up late because I, I stay up late, and I sit on the couch for a few hours, and I play with the dog. I've never, I barely see her around the house. 
and then we talk together. You don't just bring me, say, come in the room, and then she's laying on the bed while you scolded me. Like, no, that's not how you do it. That's not, I don't, like, I know I, I can't do no parenting skills lesson right now, but that's not how you do it. I'm sorry. If I'm getting off, I'm just saying. But shit, don't talk to me about that. It's like you. <laughs> just saying, for real. But when I moved from the Jones family and I came to live with my aunt from New York, honestly, I love this girl. I love this woman. She is 66. She, she know what she doing. She ain't had no kids, but you know, she know she she's a she's a strong woman. She know what she doing. She raised me good. Even though I still need to clean my room. And the fact is, yeah, Tumblr, <laughs> Tumblr, like when I what I've been through, what you've heard, what I've been through is just a lot of stuff. And like you think, ah, uh, nah, nah, you're fine. I mean, that's not really that much. Okay, you've been in foster care. A lot of kids have. Who the fuck are you talking to for one? I'm just saying, but it's just that a lot of people don't understand. When I tell someone at my school, oh, I've been in foster care, please stop making jokes about calling the cops on your parents. No, that's not funny. That's not funny to me. I've been through shit. When the cops took me, I was there, there were people watching like, oh, snap, is she getting arrested for hurting someone or something? And I'm sitting there, and trust me, the back of the cop car is cut. Just, just like, I'm sitting there like, what's in my future when you're sitting in the back of a cop car or in the back of a social worker car and they taking you away from your house and you're sitting there thinking what's my future going to be like and how is this going to affect me and my family right now it's not even about that it's just like right now i'm dealing with depression you can't tell because i'm i'm, pr I'm a pretty i'm a pretty person i'm a person that hides it within myself and then when i'm alone i just cry I'm just the person who lays there like, uh, you know, but when I'm around people, I'm smiling, laughing, making jokes. But what they don't see, and when people do see me sad, I'm like, no, fine, 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 you know, I, I, you know, but what upsets me is that I feel like I'll never be good enough to do anything right. I'll never be good enough to get good grades because I'm the kind of person who gets 80s and 90s. But the minute I get 65, you can tell by the look on my face, I'm disappointed in myself. And I feel like I disappointed my family. And when the children around me go, oh, I just shitted on you. Oh, I actually got a higher grade than Sharonda, which is my name, Sharonda Donnie Spelling. Trust me, I fucking hate it. I don't like, I actually, when I was younger, I wanted to name Sasha. I hate that too now. <laughs> I'm sorry, people named Sasha, but nah, I I, my name is Sharonda Donnie Bell. I went by the name Donnie's since I was a, for for 12 years. I figured out I was Sharonda not even that long ago. And the thing is, like, Tumblr is a getaway. My first getaway was Chat Tango. And after a while, when I discovered Tumblr, when Tumblr was discovered, Chat Tango started getting empty. And like, you when you when Chat Tango gets empty. And you're sitting here and you're wondering, why is this person not coming online? Why is this person not talking to me? Why is this person saying, oh, be back later, or BRB, or I'm doing this, I'm tumbling, or something like that. You're sitting there like, what is this? And all of a sudden, you go to Tumblr, and boom, bitches is there. You're just like, this is where all the bitches been. They just everywhere. Shit. But Tumblr is my personal getaway, because I'm, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm depressed about a lot of things. Um, I'm depressed about not being good enough, not having good grades. I'm depressed about worrying about my future, about my family, about how I'm gonna live, about my health a little. Cause I'm, I trust me, everyone has health problems. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, what's what's the word? I'm very uncomfortable with not only my body but with my personality, with just me. Like, I actually want to be a male. I want to change my gender, which is kind of weird. I want. That's why I've actually done little hints to my friends. I've I've grown up to a friend and said, if I came to school a guy and my name was Sean, would you still talk to me? Which is a common question. People be like, yo, if I did this, would you still talk to me? But I said I said it to my friend, and my friend gave me this look. She was just like, no, nah, maybe, okay, fine, I would, but damn, you got dick, <laughs> like yeah. And I, I asked a lot of them, I asked about a few of them, and some of them was like, no, I wouldn't. And I'm thinking, 
you talk to the real me, but is the real me even, does does the real me even matter to you? If I change my gender, why should that why should that change the way we act in class? Cause we're retarded as fuck in class. We sit there and we play games. We have races battles. Don't ask what it is. I won't explain. This is a half an hour. I hope you know I'm putting my heart and soul in this shit. If you if you want to leave now, you could have left 25 minutes ago or even 15. I don't, if you want if you, if this is too much, just go. I don't give a shit. I'm talking out my heart right now. But I'm trying. I'm not getting teary eyed. I don't want to get teary eyed over certain shits. But YouTube video is easy for me to talk. But when I talk in front of actual people, I get emotional. But um, it's a getaway and it's hard because people don't know the real you and you feel like a bother you feel like an annoyance to other people when you post oh someone just died or oh i just broke up with this person or oh i feel kind of lonely and like no one's responding to my post and then all of a sudden these anons come up and they're like go kill yourself you're ugly you're fat you're worthless you're attention seeking whore shut the fuck up no one was asking you did you see oh anons please respond to this with your asshole comments no we didn't fucking put that keep your comments to your fucking self unless you have something good to say because we don't give a shit about your goddamn bad opinion motherfuckers okay <laughs> the reason why I get away is because I my aunt doesn't she you know I love her she gives me what I need what I want she, you know she's that kind of person but she doesn't she's one of those really hardcore Christians if I said I was bi which I am I'm I'm bisexual I like girls and guys probably get probably girls more than guys because guys just ugh. but um if I told her that she would black on me because she she knows homosexuality is a sin even bisexuality is a sin apparently but, well, i don't give a shit because it says because i even whipped out the bible on her i said it says jesus says something about do not judge and i want you guys to know that whoever fuck thinks of oh being homo is a sin bitch i want you to go in the bible it says do not judge your neighbors treat them as you want to be treated love your neighbor do not lie steal cheat all that shit it does not say in there, go up to a homo and cuss them the fuck out and tell them they're a sin for being homo. No, it doesn't say that. It does not say that. God, it says God will judge those when the time comes. So let God do his work and you do fucking yours. I don't care if you don't like the person, keep that to your fucking self. Just telling you right now. Keep it to yourself. Or I might shank you. I might blow your shit up. I'm probably gonna get a lot of dislikes on this shit because I know there's some homophobes on YouTube. I know you bitches. I know you. But you know, and I I, I love people too easily. I've had two boyfriends who I thought I loved and they were assholes. The second one kinda creeped me out. But the thing is, I almost fell in love with my best friend, so I almost fell in love with my best friend, um, uh, oops, oops, oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, what was her name? <laughs> it's it's such an SU. <laughs> I'm sorry. My BFF. I almost fell in love with her. She told me I don't roll that way. I got upset, but I got over it. But, hold on, I'm gonna bring some names in this. I'm sorry, but I have to, because people won't understand. A few months ago, me and these uh, three other children, kids, people, <laughs> met on Tumblr and we made this little group on the tiny chat. I, th I know you know this number, I am 76W. And us, we were a group, we actually thought we were homestuck, we, we literally did. And it was me, Epic, Aradia, Jade, we were, we were just best of friends joking around watching videos listening to music and just talking and epic was one of those people who you know he was an annoying asshole you're an annoying asshole it's true you're fucking annoying <laughs> i am too but fuck <laughs> but he was one of those people who you just couldn't help but laugh at he was one of those people that made you laugh and i am too trust me and like he he was fun to be around even though he got on your fucking nerves got on your fucking nerves but he was fun to be around we just loved just talking to him and stuff and he would have those moments where I think he had some kind of illness where he would, you know, be in, and he wouldn't go on camera because he didn't have it at the time. But, you know, you could hear him coughing and he was really sick and we were worried about him because he was on the brink of giving up. 
his sickness was just that bad. He just wanted to give up. And what happens is that Aradia wasn't there at the time. I think she was asleep or studying. I don't know. But it was me and Jade, and we stayed there with him the entire night to make sure that he was okay and that he went to sleep safe and alive. And we actually cried. Like, I don't know if she was crying. She was poker facing that shit. But I was crying. And because I was worried about losing a friend. Because I haven't lost. Like, I'm not. I'm, the only death I had to deal with was Jason. And that was years ago. I barely remember that. But if he died right there on the microphone, personally, I would have fucking bust out my room door screamed, cried on the couch and my aunt would have been like, what the fuck are you doing? Damn. But, shit. And we would have personal talks, you know, talk about our personal lives, what, what happened that day. And recently, one by one, they've started to disappear from the group. First it was epic. No, it was Radia first. She started, I think it was just school. Like, I assume it's school. School is the perfect answer to keep me from being de more depressed than I am. She left first, and at first, you know, when one person leaves, you're just like, oh, they'll come back. She left first, and we start seeing less and less of her until it was just the three of us. Me, Epic, and Jade. And then Epic started being, you know, a little sketchy. He would come some days, come, come on the weekends, and stuff like that. And then... He all but disappeared. I recently saw him, recently. And he all but disappeared, so it's just me and Jade, and we would, sometimes she would come on, sometimes I just text her, you know. And after a while, honestly, I'm sorry, Jade, I have to say this, because this is emotional, I have to get it out, because it's been in my fucking head, and I've been depressed over it. I even made a fucking depressing comic, and I will show it. Maybe, depends. But it's just, oh my god. We were, we were talking, um... We, we talked for a few days, and after a while, I noticed I had a special feeling in my heart for her. Emotional, very emotional feeling, very. It was that kind of feeling when you talked, and she would sing for me, and we would talk, and listen to music, and then she left and said bye, and then, you know, you had that bubbly feeling, you're like, mm, you know, happy. And so one day, I go on Tiny Chat with my corny ass self. And I put the tiny chat topic as, will you go out with me? Yeah. I did it. I was so proud. Oh my god. And I waited. I thought Epic was going to show up like an asshole be like, what the fuck is this? But he didn't. She did. And I was like, oh, I can't do this. Because you know when you ask out someone you really like and you're like, oh shit, no, no. Change my mind. Click, click. Get fucking out of here. So she came in and she didn't notice at first. She didn't notice the topic. So I was like, hey, hi, how you doing, you know, and I, and I mentioned it, I was like, did you see the topic? And she goes, oh. And since we role play, she's like, is that for John and Jade from Homestuck? I'm like, no. She's like, oh, <laughs> you're asking me? I was like, yes. And we discussed it, she said yes. And you don't know when she said yes, my whole world opened up. All the depression just poof. Like, I was happy. I was fucking giggling and falling over and just shit like fuck i was just a happy fucking camper He's like you don't even know nigga you don't even know oh sorry i said the n-word mm -hmm. okay. and i was happy we just it only lasted for a few days so for a few days you know i was happy i went to school happy i was just fucking yay yes life i love it fucking sunshine and then we were watching the movie, and after the movie, everyone left, and it was just me and her. And she was drawing a picture. And I look away from the screen for a moment to look at Tumblr or something. And when I go back, she had a blank page, and she was writing. And she said, can I talk to you for a minute? And is anyone else here? So I checked, and there was no one there. And I said, fine, what do you want to talk about? And she said, I don't, I, I'm sorry, but... I don't think this is really going to work out. I'm not, I don't think I'm ready for a relationship and stuff like that. And honestly, this has never happened before. When I broke up with both of my boyfriends, I was like, bye, fucking see you later, bitch. I was sick of them. But when I saw those words, it's not going to work out. I'm not ready for a relationship. And I think it'd be best. This is the blow. This is the blow. This is the fucking shit. When you read this shit. You, this is the kind of shit when you read it from someone you actually like and you're just like Pfft. it said I I hope we could still be friends 
crumple smash fuck i broke into tears i don't want to make you feel guilty i still love you but i broke into tears and I was thinking, was it my fault? Did I do something wrong? That's the first question that comes to your fucking head. Is like, did I do something wrong? I never asked the question. She can answer if she wants to, if you want to, yeah. But I asked, I didn't ask it. I said, it's fine, you know, behind, behind, she, she couldn't see me. All she saw was the words, yeah, it's fine, I understand. We can still be friends, smiley face. But in real life, my heart was broken, I was crying, I was upset, I was even more depressed than anyone could ever think. And then that's when it all started to fall apart. It was just me and her after Epic and Aradia left, and all of a sudden she just left. It disappeared. I would, I still go on IMW7, IM67W every day now, just seeing who's there, and no, it'll be empty for weeks months days it's just empty and i'm sitting here like whatever because we did plan to meet t in two years we plan to just you know meet up and i'm so i sit there sometimes i just type in i just type in stuff that i know no one will ever see where did you guys go why did you leave me all alone are we still gonna meet in two years and honestly i don't think those questions will ever be answered and you know it hurts to think that you know, I trusted I trusted you guys enough to, you know, to, you know, just go and meet you guys and be like, what the fuck suck? Let's just hang out. Fuck. Shit. Have fun. And, 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 you know, days after that, I go to school and I seclude myself from everybody. I can't, you know, I still talk to people. I still laugh and talk. But when I have a chance to be alone, I take that fucking chance. Because, honestly, I just put my head down and I just think over shit and I'm like what did I do wrong why is this happening to me you know stuff like that and it can be emotional and your only getaway is a fictional character my getaway is Scree my getaway is Badger my getaway is Judah my getaway is Roy my getaway is Ivan my getaway is um, pork chop all my other characters on chat tango and tumblr all those characters are all pieces of me I've taken out and spread to the world just so that they can know that There's a person out there who not only feels sad or feels happy But they feel like they're the only one out there and that they're depressed and that they need help and that they want Someone to be there to hold them at night and tell them that it's gonna be okay and that you know You don't have to be alone and honestly when I grew up if I cried I would be told, stop crying, you're a big girl. Well, I've been a big girl to, for too fucking long. And sometimes, you just need to fucking cry. When, when, when I'm in school, and say someone upsets me, and I start crying, I don't cry only when I'm upset. I, I cry when I'm angry. And people in that fucking school, they get me fucking angry. If you fucking see this video, I'm telling you right now, don't mess with my shit, because I'll fuck you up, just say when you get me angry, I cry. Not because I'm, I'm a, a crybaby. Because that crybaby shit is gone. That crybaby shit is gone. If you push me to the edge, I'll punch you in the nose. But it's just that I cry because I'm thinking this person is taking advantage of me. And they don't know what I can do. Just because there are tears in my face doesn't mean I'm going to let you push me over. And the children, it, the, the, the little brats, the little fucking think they all fucking met bitches in my school who think they can push me over I want you to know I want to stand for your shit and for everyone out there who has to deal with those stanky little bitches I want you to know that you're not alone people like me I don't want you getting any fights or anything don't go to that level unless you have to I have the excuse of if you get hit you hit back but I just want you to know, you're not the only one out there who has to deal with this shit. There's a lot of people, and the way to deal with it is to ignore the stank-ass bitches, because haters gonna fucking hate. Alright. Haters gonna hate. Alright. Um, <laughs> but it's just that, they'll, when they upset me and they know I'm getting mad, I'll go like this. Straight face. And what they say gets me even angrier, and they know it. They say, oh, you better stop or she's going to cry. I've only cried twice in that school. The first time was because I was depressed about something they didn't even fucking know about. The second time was over the death of my grandmother who died recently. She died in um 
a couple of days before her birthday. And honestly, when I went to her funeral, I talked. Usually, I just clinged to my aunt the whole time and cried. But I said she was a great woman. And Trump, I, honestly, if she had, if she knew any of the shit I've been through, she will fuck some bitches up. She will fuck up the kids that make fun of me. She will fuck up the people that thought they could push me over. She would, I don't care how old she was, she would take her walker or her wheelchair and throw that shit in your face. Because there are people in my family who do not tolerate that. And when they hear about it, which is best if they don't hear about it, they will hurt somebody. And you don't know what a person's family will do for their family. Just because you see a little kid um, who likes to have a teddy bear and they're like 10 years old. A 10 year old can have a fucking teddy bear. Leave him alone. If a, if a 9 year old wants to kiss uh, a, another 9 year old he has a crush on, calm down. Because if you let your 4 year old dress up like a little whore, then the 9 year old could kiss the 9 year old that he's in love with. Because if you're a whore of a daughter who's only 4 years old and is talking about dicks and shit, because I'm pretty sure I heard a few children talk about that. If your child's allowed to do that, then this child's allowed to do this. I don't care, oh, this is my kid, I do what I want. Okay, I hope you know you're raising your daughter to be something that she can be greater than. She could become a doctor, she could become a dentist, she could become a scientist who could cure shit that we don't even the fuck. I'm ranting. Ignore my rant. Ignore it. Ignore it. But, uh, I'm going totally off subject. But I just want you to know, anyone and everyone, Caitlyn, Ed, Ed, Josh, fucking, out names, fucking people. I just want you guys to know, you are loved. We love you. We want you guys to just know that if you leave, we will be sad. I will be sad. I will sit here like shit. I'm alone. Again. Because honestly, out of the 15 or more, maybe less, accounts I have, there's about six of those accounts that I go on and I just sit there and I constantly click dashboard and wait for new messages to come up like, oh, hi, do they want to run roleplay? And even when I do answer those, they don't answer back. And that happens. People ignore you and you feel like you're not worthy to talk to them. But just know that you're worthy to someone. There's always that one person who will go in your Axe box as an anon or as an actual account. And they'll tell you, I love you. I care for you. Especially my wifey, Joshi. I love you, bitch. I love you. Okay. There are people out there. And don't give up. And like for my friend Killer Shy, who was a very great person, she, she, um, sadly she, um, committed suicide not that long ago. And when I heard the news, I was very upset because she was the person who created, who actually brought me and the four other, and the three other children who planned the meet in two years. She is the one who brought us together because her character gave birth to a character named Rathberry Taffy. And Rathberry was my character when I, you know, roleplayed him. And Rath was the name I went by when I first met the other three. And she's the one who brought us together. And when I heard that she committed suicide because of the things that happened in her life, it made me genuinely upset that she didn't come to us and she didn't talk to us. And if you have problems and you feel like you have no one to go to or you can't talk to anyone, come to us. Come to someone on Tumblr who you can trust. Someone who won't expose you and say all oh, this shit about you. Come to me. Come to Meryl. Come to Sophie. Come to Josh. Come to anyone. I just want you to know you are loved, you are a special person, you are worth it. You are worth talking to. You're not a mess up, you're not you're not a freak, you're not a, just a gay motherfucker or some shit. You're a special person, you are original, you are creative, and we just love you. Why get get that shit in your head? Okay, say it with me. We love you. I love you. Everyone loves you, and I just want you to know it gets better. Oh shit, I just said it. I said it, but fuck, it gets better. Cause I never, I tried to commit suicide when I was in Florida. Cause honestly, I didn't think it was worth it. I didn't think going through all this shit was worth it. See where I am now? I'm 15 years old. I'm getting a 90 average in my classes. I mean, I have my own room. I'm living with my aunt. I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna get there, and whatever life has in store for me, it's gonna come out. And it gets better, cause honestly, shit's been crazy. Shit has been crazy. And just, just, I love you guys. I just, give me up, give me, come, come, come. All right. Okay, so let me just stop this shit, cause I'm at 50, <laughs> 50 minutes, <laughs> almost an hour.
if you want to watch this then you can you can skip through it i don't care but i just want you guys to know how much i care for you and just you know it gets better it just it just it just you know you go through life stuff and life challenges are just to see how much you can take and how much you're capable of and honestly you guys are capable of everything if you can make a fucking vampire kicking chicken cow shit character and then build up a whole story from that nigga then you're just worth it just well, i'm totally just just oh, let me shut the fuck up <laughs> let me shut up okay so bye everybody i love you and just you know stay strong motherfuckers um